one isn't always the case for anyone. So if you don't have a story about this, that's totally fine. But it's no secret that there are sometimes gender inequities within STEM. And so I was wondering if you could tell me about a time when you felt disadvantaged because of your gender and what advice you can give young women who might be discouraged from entering a career in STEM because of this disadvantage. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely an important uh, an important thing to talk about because if we don't bring things to the surface then they don't necessarily get fixed right and so i um actually at caltech participated in a child care committee where we looked at what's called the leaky pipeline in stem um, and looked at how women left the field and at what periods women left the field um, or left stem and one of the periods that actually affected me um, personally was um, just having children, right? Because a lot of times the timing of a woman's biology indicates that it's better, you know, it, it's easier to better biologically to have children around the kind of graduate school postdoc time. And um, now, of course, there are all these amazing medical advances. People are freezing um, their eggs and doing all sorts of um, really cool things to be able to um, kind of um, bridge that gap. But I, in kind of the most basic sense for me, and especially at that time when I was pregnant with my daughter, I actually, before even, this is how close I was with my mentor, Diane, before I even got pregnant, I had a conversation with her and I said, you know, I'm really worried about my career. If I have a child now, this is, I feel like this is my time to have a child. I really want to have a child, but I am worried that uh, it's going to mess up my career or how am I going to get back into things, etc. And so this is exactly kind of, a, it's a great, um, a great uh, example of how you could go to your mentor and say, I really don't, know how to how to go about this and um you know oftentimes people will feel very humbled by your by your question and respected by the fact that you trust them and so uh don't hesitate to ask those questions but that you know that make you feel comfortable but for me diane really encouraged me and she said uh, especially because we were doing this leaky pipeline calculation and i was about to you know i wanted to have a baby it was really on my mind and uh she just told me something that i think was really revolutionary for me which is actually um now when i get the opportunity to mentor young women and they ask me similar questions i, I tell them this it, research actually is a wonderful place to have children if you have a good support system right and that's really key um having a mentor or choosing a faculty advisor if you're in research or if you're in education um or a boss who would be supportive of you having children is really key and i think that if you do have that person then the flexibility of the research environment is actually a wonderful opportunity to have children because you can schedule your experiments around uh, certain activities. You can kind of um, be in the lab a little earlier, a little bit later. Um, you know, that, that kind of flexibility is not always possible in a corporate job um, where you really expect it to be at your desk, you know, from nine to five. So there are still a lot of things to work out for women in um, in STEM and, you know, having kids and being able to pay for childcare. There are all sorts of issues, but it did really uplift me and made me feel supported by her answer. She really encouraged me to just go with my gut and not kind of let external pressures to, you know, dictate how I should go about my own family life. Um, and, and she really encouraged me with her perspective, you know, on the research environment and having children within the research environment. And so I think that it all comes down to kind of our original, what we had talked about earlier, which is finding that right person and um, finding that mentor who will be supportive and will be able to adjust and, and you know, that's, that's the hard part, but it is the most important foundation. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. And I think 
I mean, I never thought of research as somewhere that gives people a lot of freedom, but in the way you've explained, I think it's really, it's a good thing. And I mean, research in general is obviously incredibly interesting, but the fact that it does provide some flexibility for people who want to do other things other than work, who want to start a family in your case, I think that's a really nice way to, I guess, bridge the gap between personal and fam family life and work life because you know you can still be working you can still be doing research and things like that but you can also be focusing on your family and on your personal life which I think you know is a very happy medium for a lot of people or a happy balance for a lot of people yeah definitely and so my next question is what do you think the largest breakthrough will be within technology in the next 10 years and how will it influence the next generation of young women yeah, so I'm fairly biased in this, right? Because I think that um, the, you know, ethical AI is really where I'm focusing most of my mental energy these days. And of course, thinking about Lucinetic all the time and how to make it better. But, uh, you know, we're, you know, democratizing access to AI and we're trying to equalize the playing field uh, when it comes to, you know, accessing opportunities. But beyond Lucinetic, there are so many applications of AI that, you know, where women can, I think, harness machine learning to create a better future. And this is what really encourages me is that in the past, it has been really difficult for women to illustrate some of the inequities in, um, in different fields and pay gap, all these other uh, parts of, you know, being uh, in, the, in a career. But with mach you know, machine learning, it gives me this hope that we can harness data and to um, explain the data and to illustrate that data and in order to be able to correct it. Because at the end of the day, as a research kind of, as a research minded person, I really feel that being able to manipulate data and being able to learn from data is our greatest asset. And we can really use that to improve um, improve career outcomes. Thank you, Kalipi. So uh, thrilled to, to do this with you. So fun. This is awesome. It was great to meet you and talk with you and just hear more about your story and everything. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Kalipi. All right, take care. Talk Bye. to you soon. Bye. Bye.